Okay, here we are, Monday morning, bright and early, and our Argosy desk has arrived. Here it is. <laughs> if, you can, if you can believe this, as they say, some assembly required. So this is 11 boxes. That looks like that's gonna be a, a pretty big piece to handle in that big tall box there. So we got 11 boxes of the Argosy desk. I'm gonna start bringing these into the studio one at a time, start opening up all the packaging. Everything seems to look good. Doesn't look like anything was damaged in any way, but I won't know till I open everything. But this is what arrived, Federal Express. And there we are, argosyconsole.com. Great work furniture, great workstations if you have never checked them out. They're a little on the pricey side, but again, it's an investment. Something that will uh, hopefully last many, many years. It'll be my last workstation. So anyhow, here's the boxes, here's the delivery. It's here, 11 boxes. I will uh, start unpacking this, get it downstairs, and when I have it all unpackaged, and uh, prior to assembly, maybe I'll shoot, shoot a little more footage here, kind of give you a look-see and try to document this process as we go along. So. Uh, until next time, I will see you soon. Wish me luck. Okay, well, it's finally together. So um, we did not do any filming of the actual construction of the desk, and I apologize for that. And the reason for that was, guys, because the help that I had, my buddy that came over, he only had about two to three hours tops to help me today. And I didn't want to get bogged down with uh, with filming because I knew I had to get this workstation built before he left. This is definitely a two person operation, no question. So you saw all the boxes sitting outside and uh, we brought them all downstairs in the studio and the desk is now constructed fully. Um, it's, pushed, it's pulled away from the wall a lot more than it will be when it's in its final resting place here. It's just pulled away from the wall so I can uh, get all the gear in it and get it all wired. There it is. So this is uh, the Argosy Dual 15L workstation. They make it um, a Dual 15 um, and a Dual 15L. The L means extra long. Um, reason being is that between the two wings on the side here for the rack, for the racks, you can put two 27 inch monitors here the, in, the, in the L version. In the regular version, you can only put one 27 inch. So it, it extends the length of the desk about 20 to 30 inches. Um, and so I wanted to get with the extra space because as, as I talked to you guys about earlier, um, one of the problems I had with my last workstation is I, I, I really underbought. And as my studio grew and as I got more technology, I realized the workstation wasn't going to work for my needs. So I wanted to make sure this time I overbuilt the over purchased the desk, if that makes sense. So no matter what I do in the future, this is pretty much one of the biggest desks that they make until you get into some real big heavy duty commercial studios where they make custom desks that are much bigger than this. But for the home studio person, this is pretty much the largest desk physically that they make. So anyhow, you have um, two uh, five inch racks, five space racks on either side. So it's five spaces in the, on the front on both the left and the right. So that gives me a total of 10 spaces. And then around the back, there's also the, which I didn't realize when I purchased, this is pretty cool. I never, I've never seen this before. But in the back, if you can see, there's actually another three rack space. And I guess that would be good for like power conditioners. Never thought of that, you know, just have the power switch in the back. So you really have eight spaces on each side, five in the front, three in the back. So any of your power conditioners that you can easily just reach behind the wall or reach behind the desk and flip a power switch, that'll save you some real estate on the front side of the rack. So that's pretty cool. So it's on both sides. Uh, behind the desk here, um, and again, this is further away from the wall than where it's gonna end up. The desk will pretty much end up right on the edge of this carpet when it's all said and done. Um, but you have a shelf here. The monitor shelf actually sits about two inches lower than the rest of the top of the desk, which is kind of nice. So this is the nice monitor shelf. And again, for me, I'm just gonna put one 30 inch monitor up here and I'm gonna have all this other open space. Uh, maybe I'll put my Mac Pro up here somewhere. Um, Again, just to try to kind of consolidate everything, but again, who knows, down the road, maybe I end up with a much bigger screen. I didn't want to run out of room. So that's kind of the top side looking from the back. And if you look underneath, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this if it's going to be too dark. Yeah, it's kind of a privacy panel here. But inside the racking, and this is probably going to be way too dark, but I'll show it to you anyway. Um, 
along the whole length of this desk, you probably can better see it from the front, there's a whole, I'm calling it like a trough, uh, of a way to be able to route all the wiring so you don't see it. And so, maybe if I bring the camera down here and kind of show you. And again, it could be too dark, and if it is, I apologize. But underneath the desk, and we're looking from the front side now, all the wires can be neatly tied up and cable tied so you don't see anything laying on the floor, which was huge for me. That was something that I really wanted to be able to accomplish. If you remember the beginning of this video, um, or the last video, I'm not sure how I'm gonna edit all this together. But you saw all kinds of wires on the floor, from my workstation to my computer, and just a big pile of spaghetti. And I really wanted to be able to hide that this time around. So this has a nice wire management system. So again, a pretty big work surface. The leather armrest, which is nice. Um, again, five rack spaces on the front, three on the back. The Focals, my speakers, can sit right up here. Plenty of room. Um, and I just think this is going to work out much, much better. So what I'll do is I will shoot some video as the gear starts to go back in. But there is the finished Argosy workstation, the Dual 15L. Again, it's a pricey workstation. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to kid you. Um, but it should be the last workstation I ever have to buy. I don't know how the hell I'd ever move it out of this place anyway. If I had to, if you had to move this out of the place, you'd have to take it apart. It's so big, it would never go in and out of a door like this. It'd, it'd have to come apart in 10 pieces. So I don't plan to ever move this thing again. So for now, it's probably overkill, but it's going to suit me well or serve me well as we move forward and then as I build my business and continue to build my business. So, and what else is awesome about this too? as you can see from a, from a far back shot, is once this is pushed back, it really kind of fits perfectly between the acoustical, the acoustic bass traps in each corner, if you could see that. So this almost looks like it was custom made to fit almost right between the bass traps. So it's gonna just slide straight back, um, and it's just gonna give me plenty of space. And from a depth perspective, it's no, doesn't come off, it won't come off the wall any further than my old workstation did. So I'm still gonna have just as much room um, from from the front wall to where I was sitting before the only thing that's really changed is the is the length you know um, and before the desk was a lot it was a lot shorter um, and all the space on either end was kind of dead space so now I filled it up with actual work surface so that's good so anyhow here it is um, the Argosy workstation completely assembled about three and a half hours to do so with two people I'm a beat I'm exhausted so I'm going to uh, call it a day and uh, I've been working on this since about 9 o'clock this morning. Um, it is about 3.30 in the afternoon. By the time we unpacked it all, sorted everything out, got it all built, and we took about an hour break for lunch. So we worked pretty much straight through the day. Me and my buddy Joe. So I want to thank my buddy Joe, if he's watching this, for helping me out. Uh, he has free studio time for the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> with all the work he's helped me with over the years, helping me construct this whole studio uh, and all the stuff he's helped me with over the years, he, he, will, he will always have a free pass here anytime he ever wants. So thank you, Joe. I do appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this part of it. And uh, I will get back to you soon as soon as I start putting some gear back in and we start wiring things up and we start cleaning things up and buttoning things up because I have to get back to work for you guys and start creating more training videos and start working on the next Made Easy product with PreSonus. So until next time, this has been Dave from HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Okay, now I'm in the uh, process here, guys, of uh, getting some of the gear wired uh, back in. So it looks like I've settled on uh, my Dangerous Music D-Box, the Apollo, and my Hosa patch bay, uh, the XLR patch bay, is all going to go in here on the left side. The D-Box is underneath the Apollo there, as you can probably see it. So I'm just trying to get everything kind of pre-wired. Um, as you can see, you never realize how many wires you have until you start doing this. Um, but I got out the old label maker and I'm gonna start labeling. I've labeled everything um, to make sure everything is properly labeled out of my patch panel, channel Hosa channel one through 12 here on the back. Um, even though only the first four go to the input of my Apollo, um, I pre I installed some wires for channels uh, 8 through 12 in case I ever need them down the road. I don't have to pull the whole unit out of the rack. It's already there and it's already labeled. Um, and as I'm starting to run cables down to the other side, where the two new uh, Pultec warm audio Pultecs um, are going to be. Um, so again, I got wires going um, that are going to come into the Pultec. Um, so like in this example here. 
And again, this is a good habit if you guys don't already do this. I'm probably one of the few that, that has not done this. So the EQ out, which is going to come out of the pull text, is going to go back, back in. Uh, I'll get some focus here. Back in on channel 8. Channel EQ out, 8 in. The other one says EQ out, 7 in. That's going to be coming back into my Dangerous Music D-Box. And I got two other cables down there that are labeled that are going to go from the output of the Apollo to the input of the pull text. And these are the Warm Audio EQ PWAs which are mono Pultec clones, which I've heard awesome things about. And we're gonna put those on this rack right here. And we are going to use that as our master bus EQ. And we're gonna compare them to the plugins, which I think you guys are really gonna like. So that is gonna be coming soon. I think those are due in a couple of days. So I'm trying to get everything pre-wired and pre-labeled. So everything is starting to look like a, a studio again. <laughs> well, not really, <laughs> stuff everywhere. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Just gonna kind of start pre-wiring everything. So the lesson here is, you know, once you get everything wired up, you should label everything. Because down the road, you never know how you're gonna, uh, how you're gonna make out. And if you have to dig out and dig wires from underneath your, your, uh, your workstation, you wanna have things clearly labeled. The other thing I really like, I think I showed you in the last segment here, is this uh, on the back of this rack, um, you have a three space um, rack, which is great. So I'm putting one of my power conditioners back here. So all I'll have to do is just reach behind the corner of the desk and hit the power button. And that's going to save me room in the front of the racks for future expansion. And I think I misspoke in the last segment. I said that these were five uh, space racks on the front. They are not. They are eight. Uh, eight spaces on the front on each side. So that's 16 spaces on the front and, th and uh, what I say? Three on the back? Yeah, three on the back on each side. So on this side and on that side. So you have six spaces in the back and 16 uh, up front, eight and eight. So that gives me lots of expansion room. I'm not gonna be using half of this. I mean, the Pultex or the Pultec clones are gonna be over here. Those are two spaces each. So those are gonna be four spaces. And I'll put a, um, you know, so I'm gonna have, you know, half of this rack will be empty. We're just using a, a blank panel insert. And then on the back side of this, I'm gonna put the other power conditioner to plug those things into. Um, so anyhow, I'm gonna have plenty of expansion room. So that's it for now. Gonna keep on wiring. And as uh, we start to bring things back together, I will start to uh, put this uh, more footage in here. So until later, I'll speak to you guys soon. Okay, here we are finally finished with the new install of the workstation. And the studio is pretty much back together. So let me just give you kind of a tour of what we finally ended up with. So as you've been seeing and hearing about all along, um, this is the new Argosy um, Dual 15L workstation. Um, really nice workstation. It was a bear to put together. It took about three and a half hours with two of us to put it together. It comes in, as, as you saw earlier, 11 or 12 different boxes. But let me just kind of take you through the layout of the workstation. Um, so on this side here, again, you have an eight rack um, or eight space uh, rack here for gear. And right now what I have in here are three pieces of gear. And you can see there's a big hole here at the bottom. I have some new blank plates coming uh, sometime today. Uh, so this is the uh, Dangerous Music D-Box on the bottom here. We've talked a lot about that on my YouTube channel, which controls my whole uh, studio. And then above that, we have the Universal Audio Apollo Quad, which is a four channel interface. And then above that, we have the Hosa mic panel, which is a 12 channel XLR panel. Um, the first four channels are being plugged into the back of the Apollo. So now I have easy access without having to get underneath the desk at all, which is great. Um, and so that works out well. And then I have channels five through 12, which right now just have uh, XLRs hanging off the back of them connected. Um, and, and if I ever expand my IO, I'll have easy access to getting to those ins and outs as well. So on top here, we have the Focal monitors. If you remember in the last video or at the beginning of this video, um, these were on um, speaker stands behind my old workstation. This time I put them on top of the workstation to save room so I can push the desk a little bit further back to the wall, even though it's still about, about 16 inches off the front wall, which is what it was before when I had my speaker stands. So that worked out well. 
Uh, next to this, I have my my cheap old boom box, the JVC boom box that I do all my referencing on. All the mixes I do will go through there at one point. And then on top of that, I have my webcam for making YouTube videos and such. Uh, next to that, I have the Apple Cinema Display 30 inch that was on my old workstation as well. You guys remember that. And then one of the main reasons why I bought this workstation to begin with is the Raven MTI 27 inch touchscreen which again works perfectly on this workstation because everything is flat. It's a flat work surface where if you remember my old workstation it was an angled work surface. So here's the side view. This is kind of a two-tiered kind of a flat work surface. So you can see the MTI sitting on the upper section and then there's about a two inch drop to where the monitors would sit and I put my Apple Cinema display on a uh, stand, a custom little you know riser if you will. But this desk um, is large enough where if you wanted to, if you didn't have a touch screen and you wanted to put two 27 inch monitors side by side, this workstation will accommodate that. So there's a lot of room for expansion. Um, and that's what I wanted. So everything is nice and spread out. It's not cluttered at all. Everything is ni nice and neatly tucked away. Um, you've seen this before, the um, PreSonus Studio One Editor's Keys keyboard, the backlit version. Uh, really great keyboard, really like this, really well built. I did a review on this on my YouTube channel, you can check that out. And then over here we have the other Focal monitor, obviously on the other side, and then beneath that, these are a new addition to the studio. I just put a couple of pictures on Facebook about them and we will be doing a full review on this at one point, video-wise. These are the new warm 2BQs, the EQP, dash WA, which is the um, Pultec emulation. So these are two based EQs, all analog with uh, Cinemag um, in and output transformers. If you uh, Google them, you will see the pictures of the inside of one of these units, really well built, really great craftsmanship, really large transformers with tubes. Um, and this is to emulate the original Pultec style EQs, which I'm using as my master um, output EQ. So they're mono EQ, so I have two, one for the left channel, one for the right. And these are laid out exactly like a Pultec, but they have a couple of uh, nice additions. They have um, some added frequencies that were not part of the original Pultec. On the low side, if I can zoom in here, I'm sorry I'm a, if I'm a little shaky. The original Pultecs only have a 20, 30, 60, and 100 hertz. They have added the 200, 400, and the 800 hertz to give you some little bit of low mids and mid band frequencies, which is nice. Um, gives you some little more control. Um, on the high end, um, the, I believe on the original Pultec, if I'm not mistaken, there's only a 5, 8, 10, 12, and 16K. I don't believe the 3 and 4K are part of the original Pultec. So again, some additional uh, upper mid um, frequencies. Other than that, it's the same exact uh, functionality of, a, of an original Pultec. Um, and again, we're going to do a full review on this, but what little I played with this, I've only put it on a couple of uh, mixes so far, just throwing it on the master bus. And, uh, and just running the signal through this EQ without even doing any EQing by using the, uh, the bypass over here, the bypass toggle, it's the EQ on bypass. If you have that on bypass, that will just let you run the signal through the input the output transformers, as well as the tube section to get that nice analog coloration and that nice um, analog harmonic distortion just by running the signal through it without even boosting or cutting. So I've been doing some playing with that and I gotta tell you, it adds such a nice smoothness to the mix. Um, and we're gonna do a review where we're gonna compare it to the um, Universal Audio Pultec Collection software counterpart. So we're gonna compare the analog hardware to the software on the master bus to see how it um, how it fares up and then we'll do it on individual tracks as well but what I need to get first is I need to get a patch bay because right now these things are directly patched to the um, to my dangerous music D box working on the master bus it's not easy for me today to be able to switch that to where I'm bypassing it completely because if I you have to, I have to take it so I gotta get the EQs completely out of the chain if we're gonna compare it to the software, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna be getting a patch bay which is gonna sit up here in this empty space above the, uh, above the, uh, the, the EQs. 
um, and then I'll be able to easily patch these in and out of the signal chain completely so we can get a true comparison of the, um, of the software versus the hardware. So I want to do a really good A to B comparison. I want to make sure we're not, we're not doing anything improper to kind of skew the results. So that'll be coming soon. But anyway, these are two really great EQs. I'm really happy with these. Um, and again, for the price, you can't beat them. If you go Google um, Warm Audio, the EQ, uh, Warm Audio EQ, you'll find it and all the information's up there. So that's the, uh, so that's the new EQs. So this is the workstation completely set up. And as you can see, everything is so nice and neat and organized now um, very much spread out nothing is cluttered like it was before on my old workstation which is one of the reasons why I really wanted to get it um, and the other thing that I really like about this and this is probably going to seem silly to some of you but to me it was a big big deal if you remember earlier in this video I showed you the back of my old workstation and there were piles of cables everywhere as you can see here with the exception of the power cable that plugs the power strip into the wall there isn't a single wire behind this on the floor no wires behind the desk. I'll show you where all the computer and all the technology kind of lives. Um, and what's great about this as well, you can see on the back of these racks, you have a three space rack on the back side. So you can put power conditioners and other pieces of gear that you don't need to touch um, all the time in the back. So you have eight spaces in the front, three spaces in the back, gives you a lot of room for expansion. But again, for me, this was huge, not having any wires on the floor. Absolutely huge, nice and clean, nice clean look. And you say, well, where's all the wires to the computer and everything else? So let me show you. Now, it, it could be a little dark. You may not be able to see this very well, and I apologize that I'm not lighting this up enough. But underneath this desk, and let's see how much of this we can see. And again, the wires you see hanging down there underneath the desk, I'm just going out today to pick up some clips to clip those up underneath so you won't even see those as well. Uh, those will be uh, tidied away this afternoon. But underneath this desk, and another big reason why I purchased this, is this underneath shelf which where the privacy panel is runs the whole length of the desk and as you can see all my computers my hard drives right here my raid drive my mac pro which i don't know if you can see that very well and my universal audio satellite systems all live under here and all the wiring from the gear and the racks to the computer and to each other all runs underneath in the desk so you don't have any wires that are exposed. And again, some of this stuff will be cable tied a little bit neater. It looks a little sloppy right now. I have to pick up some more Velcro ties, but I'm gonna to try to neaten that up as much as possible. But it's completely underneath the desk and you can't see it from the front unless you bend down like I'm doing now and looking at it. So again, to me, that was huge. It was huge to get everything uh, tucked away in the desk where you can't see it. Again, these wires that are kind of draping down, those are gonna be uh, kind of suspended and clamped or clipped up underneath the uh, bottom of the desk today. So you won't even see that. And you'll be able to look straight underneath the desk to the back wall and there's no wires, no cables, which is great. Uh, and I put the desk on these uh, carpet sliders, these furniture sliders. So if I have to move the desk away from the wall, I can. But I really don't have to now because I don't need access to the back of the desk because everything is accessible from the front. And I guess it would be a little bit of a pain to get on your hands and knees and get under here if you needed to kind of troubleshoot something. But the amount of times that I have to really go and touch these, the computer and such is almost never. So I don't really need to worry about that. So that was a big bonus for me that everything kind of runs and lives in, in the desk. And again, when you kind of step back a little and look at the desk and look at the workstation, you can't see those wires. You can see a couple of the lights from the computer, uh, but you, you don't see the cables, which is wonderful. Um, another new addition I talked about earlier in the video was I just, I received finally my Herman Miller Arion chair. And again, you say, what's so special about a chair? Well, for someone like me who sits in a chair six, seven, eight hours a day and who has a bad back to begin with, I was sitting in a, in a prior to this in a, just a typical, you know, chair that was bought at Staples for a couple of hundred bucks and I would use a back support. And after a few hours, my legs were always starting to tingle and my back was always starting to kill me. And I did some research online and speaking to, you know, people in, on different studio forums and such. And everyone seems to rave about the Herman Miller chairs. And I've never used one. I've never even really heard of one. I did some research, went out and found that most people and people who sit for long periods of time all rave about this chair. So I bought one from my office uh, upstairs prior to buying one for the studio. And after sitting in it for five minutes, I could tell that that chair was gonna be super comfortable and never had any back discomfort. 
So I bought one here for the studio and I've already had a couple of days where I've sat in it for probably four or five hours straight and had no issues at all. Super, super comfortable, super, super pricey. If you Google this and take a look at them online, they're, you know, as of the recording of this video, about $900 US. Um, but it comes with a 12 year warranty and it's the last chair you have to buy. And I look at it as a long-term investment. And so why should you sit and work in discomfort if you don't need to? So again, it's kind of corny, <laughs> I know. But uh, the Herman Miller Arion chair, go out, check out Herman Miller. They have a whole line of chairs um, that range in different prices. I think these chairs start at about 600 bucks and depending on what features you add, it'll go up from there. But anyway, so that's my Herman Miller chair. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. I don't have any back pain sitting down anymore, which is great. So that is kind of, the setup here so you saw the before now you see the after you can see i also have uh, added um, a base trap over here in the corner this is where my um, computer used to live on a, on top of a, a rack that i used to have if you remember and i purchased another base trap so it goes floor to ceiling on the left side and on the right side so floor to ceiling and everything now looks clean neat well laid out i feel anyway and well organized and if you see the way the desk is it kind of fits right between those uh, base traps so it almost looks like the desk was made perfectly for that space which i'm really happy about and even though it's a much bigger workstation it doesn't make the room feel smaller because i am able to push the desk a lot closer to the front wall than where the other one was due to the fact that i don't have to get uh, access to the very front of the desk or the back of the desk um, to get to any cabling that was the main thing. It's all underneath as I showed you a few minutes ago. So therefore I could push the desk further back and I'm still got the monitors about six, 12 to 16 inches off the wall, which is kind of where they were before. So I don't have the monitors right up against the front wall, which is always a good idea to kind of pull them away as far as you can. Um, although these focals are ported on the front, that shouldn't matter as much. But anyway, the desk does not come out any further into the room. Actually, it's, it sits back a little bit, as you can see there. Um, so I have more space. So the, 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 the point is I have more space out in this section between my workstation and kind of my sitting area, which has a few things on it. So excuse me and my tripod. So there is more floor space here, more usable floor space where before, even though the desk was smaller, it was sitting further and towards the middle of the room. So this workstation has really worked out well. I'm really, really happy with it thus far. And I feel like this is the last workstation I'm ever gonna have to buy because I have lots of expansion um, for gear. Um, I have expansion for additional screens if you wanted more monitors. Um, I have a flat writing surface now over on this side of the desk where before I didn't, I have somewhere I can actually take notes and you know, arrange songs on paper and such. And it just makes for a better workstation and so, I have a few more small additions that will be coming um, that I'll do separate reviews on. One of them is a new um, podcast, uh, kind of a microphone set up by a company called MyTech, which is what I'm going to be using to do all my YouTube videos and Made Easy series stuff. It has kind of a, a high-end condenser microphone built into a, a mixer that'll kind of sit right next to the Raven and I'll be able to, uh, to patch my audio into there to make my uh, products for you guys and my training videos for you guys. So when that comes in today, I will do a separate review on that. So you don't see that right now. Um, and the only other thing I'm getting is some, some blank panels to cover the holes in the racks until they fill up with gear, which they may or they may not, we'll see but I wanted something where I can expand. So anyway, I hope this was a, a cool little series for you. You saw the before, you saw some of the process of putting things together and ripping things apart. And uh, I put some pictures on my Facebook page. And so I uh, thank you for spending the time and checking out my studio. And I hope you guys think it's cool. I, I'm really happy with it. You know, it's, it's been evolving over the last couple of years. And, uh, and I think we, we've took a step in the right direction. So here's kind of a quick panning of the, of the room. You know, again, good size control room. You can easily record, you know, a vocalist, acoustic guitar, whatever, at least in this room. And I have other rooms, as you saw in my last uh, studio tour video. And here's my Roland drum kit. There's a painting that my wife did. My wife's been taking up some painting. She made up a cool uh, kind of a guitar silhouette uh, painting uh, for me on a canvas, which I'm gonna be hanging right up between the two Oralex diamonds on the wall, the foam diamonds. I think I'm gonna hang that painting right in the center, maybe a little later today. So anyway, this was the tour and the, 
the little document series, document or documentary series of my studio. Thanks again for checking it out. Again, for more information about me and my services and all my products and everything home recording, head over to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And you can also check out visionrecordingstudios.com. Head out to Facebook, like, uh, share, and head out to YouTube and subscribe. Um, and I appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys all soon. Thanks for joining me, guys. Take care.